Insurance is a global business, so coping with home country regulation is just one part of the equation. If you are a UK insurance company operating internationally, then you have to take into consideration regulations such as the UK's Retail Distribution Review, RDR as it's known, or Europe's Solvency II requirements, and a plethora of other regulations depending on where your products are sold. We've come along to Royal London 360 in London to talk to David Nishaw, the Chief Executive of its Isle of Man office. We're here to find out how regulations impact on a company's expansion strategy, whether there are any benefits being based offshore, and where the current growth markets are. I begin by asking David what the main advantages are for an insurance company having an offshore base. Well, for any insurance company wondering whether they should go offshore, the you have to look at it from two points of view. The first is that you need to have the desire and the wherewithal to uh, try and pursue and attract international customers in different regions of the world. And if you do that, then you're probably going to look for an offshore jurisdiction to have your international base. Once you've made that decision, it's probable that an offshore jurisdiction like Channel Islands or Isle of Man or wherever is attractive because of cost and also expertise on the island. And the second main reason has got to be one of tax, I would imagine. Indeed, and that's tax for two people. Uh, the company itself, obviously, there is a low tax environment for any profits that company will make or the subsidiary will make. And it's also low tax environment for the customers around the world. Uh, and whereas you can't always avoid tax by basing yourself or how basing your policies in an offshore jurisdiction, you at least give yourself the chance to decide where and when you'll pay that tax. The m Moving on to Europe's Solvency 2 and the impact that has on the Royal London 360 in London uh, with complying with all of those new regulations, what impact does it have on the uh, Isle of Man base? Well, it comes in at two levels. If the Isle of Man subsidiary, such as ourselves, chooses to market within the EU, then clearly we have to uh, be compliant with the rules of the EU, which is only right and proper. Uh, as it happens, our parent company based in London uh, is within the EU and by definition will have to comply with solvency too, and is doing so more than willingly, in fact, quite enthusiastically. So even if we weren't marketing into the European Union in any shape or form, the reality is that we would still be sucked into the project because of our parent company's involvement. There is still a need to define where you should place capital, understand the efficiency of products, and we are part of that process in the group wherever we're selling our products. It's got to give a boost to the Isle of Man operations reputation worldwide, I would have thought, that kind of compliance. and. Yes, I, I agree. The um, There's no exact statement about this, but I've always thought that a lot of our business is what I call safe haven money, by which people are looking for a safe home for their money. And anything that increases the respect and sense of trust that can be gained by putting investments or insurance into the Isle of Man is a good thing. And if people understand that we're, because we're a subsidiary of a British company, there is good capital governance and good understanding of our capital requirements, then that's got to be good news. Now, where are the growth markets around the world that you're concentrating on at the moment? Well, as a very simplistic statement, the growth markets has to be the developing world. Uh, OK, it may be a bit trite or, to say so, and, every, and everybody says look to China, but it's not just China or not just Dubai. We also have uh, markets in the rest of Asia, even southern Africa, which I believe over a period of 10 to 20 years will actually outstrip so the so-called old economies. Mm -hmm. And in terms of growth, uh, that's no doubt where the potential is. Are you selling to the indigenous population or the expatriate the answer Easy. is a bit of both. Historically, most of the offshore companies did sell to expatriates, originally British, and then the nationalities developed from there. But those who are taking international development seriously, and that's not all of us, increasingly are looking to uh, market to indigenous high net worths in, develop in the developing world. And to do that, you really need to take uh, seriously the whole approach of becoming more regulated in, in particular territories where you want to do business. David, can we just look a little bit more closer on Solvency 2's requirements for the assignation of capital and uh, how that uh, then is, re is regulated? Yes, at the moment, of course, it's still being worked out and indeed Solvency 2 is being delayed yet another year. 
But the fact is, is that what Solvency do, Solvency 2 will do is require insurance companies to be much more transparent about where they're using capital and which divisions and products that capital is being assigned to. So that will force insurance companies to be much clearer about, with themselves at least, about which products are profitable, how quickly capital is returned. And to a certain extent, we believe Spanish practices, which go on where people cross-subsidise products, will become more difficult. And is this something that has to be done annually in advance or uh, with, with a longer lead time? Well, the rules are, are still not completely finalised, but generally one, each company will develop a model. And there, are, there is a standard model that the European uh, legislators are coming up with, and you can either just use the standard model or create an internal model of your own which is approved by the regulator. Interestingly, and maybe this is a cultural aspect, in Britain the vast majority of insurance firms are actually developing their own internal model, which they are then going to the FSA to get approved. While if you take Germany, for example, where perhaps they're more inclined to just obey rules, they're just all taking the standard model and saying, well, we'll take that and, and use it to our, for our own business. What, what does this do with, to your worldwide reputation? I would have thought it was to your advantage. Absolutely. Uh, Royal London is hugely supportive of the Solvency to legislation and everything that it implies. We believe it will create transparency, it will create better use of capital, it will be easier for outside stakeholders to understand how the company is actually operating and what risks it's dealing with and not dealing with, because all that will have to be in your internal model. And even though the legislation has been delayed, Royal London has actually taken the decision to go ahead anyway and go with the original launch date of uh, January 2013. Brave move. I think we feel confident that we can A, achieve it and B, it's good for us and our customers. Get ahead of the competition. Absolutely. David Nishaw, Chief Executive of Royal London 360 Isle of Man, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you.